Welcome to Wisdom Trek with Gramps. I am Guthrie Chamberlain and we are on day 2455 of our trek. The purpose of Wisdom Trek is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, and to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. In today's Wisdom Nugget, we'll explore the final verses of Psalm 19, verses 12 through 14. These three verses form a reflective conclusion to the psalm where David moves from marveling at God's creation and the perfection of his law to a deeply personal prayer. Here he acknowledges his own need for God's mercy and guidance, revealing a humility that we can all learn from as we strive to walk in wisdom. As we look closely at these verses, we'll see the importance of recognizing our own sin, seeking God's help in avoiding it, and committing ourselves to live in a way that's pleasing to Him. Let's read Psalm chapter 19, verses 12 through 14 from the New Living Translation. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sin. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free from guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. David begins verse 12 by asking a question that reveals the depth of his awareness of human frailty. How can I know all the sins that are lurking in my heart? This question strikes to the core of one of life's significant challenges, understanding the full extent of our sinfulness. David acknowledges that sin is not always obvious to us. There are hidden faults, subtle sins, and blind spots in our lives that we may not even be aware of. This verse invites us to reflect on the idea that we are often unaware of the ways that we fall short. It's easy to recognize some of the more obvious sins, like anger, dishonesty, or pride, But there are also sins more insidious lurking beneath the surface. These hidden faults can be things like unrecognized selfishness, envy, and even misplaced priority. David's question, How can I know all those sins lurking in my heart? is one of humility. He realizes that, on his own, he cannot fully comprehend his own sinfulness. And this is true of all of us. Our hearts are complicated and without God's light to reveal the darkness within, we may never fully understand the ways in which we have strayed from his path. David follows this question with a plea. Cleanse me from these hidden faults. What a beautiful and humble request. He's not asking to be excused from responsibility. Instead, he is asking God to cleanse him. This is a powerful reminder for us to regularly come before God, not just confessing our sins that we know about, but also asking for cleansing from those sins that we might not see. This verse emphasizes the importance of humility in our relationship with God. We must be willing to admit that we don't always know the full extent of our own shortcomings. This is a call to examine ourselves, to ask God to reveal anything that might be hindering our relationship with Him, and to seek His cleansing and forgiveness. In verse 13, David shifts from hidden faults to more intentional kind of sin. He prays, Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. Here David is acknowledging the battle that we all face against willful or deliberate sins. These are the sins that we knowingly commit, the ones where we are fully aware of what we are doing and yet choose to act in disobedience. These sins are more dangerous in many ways because they reflect conscious decision to go against God's will. David's prayer here is significant. He doesn't just ask for forgiveness after committing deliberate sins. Instead, he prays proactively for God's help to avoid it in the first place. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. We know that without God's help, we could easily fall into these kinds of transgressions. David also recognizes a potential for sin to take control of our lives. He prays, don't let them control me. This is an essential reminder for us that sin, if left unchecked, can keep can begin to dominate our thoughts, our actions, and even our hearts. What may start as a small, deliberate sin can grow into something more significant if we're not vigilant. The key here is David's dependence on God. He knows that the power to resist sin does not come from himself, but from God's strength. His prayer is one of reliance, asking God to keep him from falling into the trap of willful disobedience. He knows that if God helps him with this, he will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. This verse reminds us of the importance of daily dependence on God for our help in our battle against sin. It is not enough to try and fight sin in our own strength. We need to ask God for his protection and guidance. Deliberate sin is often the result of ignoring God's voice and going our own way, but by staying close to Him and seeking His help, we can avoid the control that sin seeks to have over us. David concludes this psalm with one of the most well-known and beautiful in Scripture. Verse 14 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. 
This is a prayer that expresses David's deep desire to live a life that is pleasing to God, not just in his actions, but also in his words and thoughts. It is a reminder that pleasing God involves more than just outward behavior. It includes the very things we say and think. David's prayer begins with, May the words of my mouth. Words are powerful. They have the ability to build up or tear down, to encourage or to discourage, to speak the truth or falsehood. David understood that the words we speak are a reflection of what's going on in our hearts. Jesus later taught in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. David's desire is that his words would align with God's will, that they would be pleasing to God. This is a prayer that we can all pray daily. We need to ask God to guide our speech, to help us choose the words that honor him and reflect his love and truth to others. But David doesn't stop with the words of his mouth. He goes deeper, praying that the meditation of my heart would also be pleasing to God. The word meditation here refers to thoughts, reflections, and intentions that occupy our minds. David knew that our thoughts are just as important as our words because what we dwell on in our hearts shapes our attitudes and actions. David's prayer reflects a desire to be purity in both his speech and his thoughts. He wants his entire life, the inner and the outer life, to be pleasing to God. And he addresses God with two powerful titles, my rock and my redeemer. By calling God his rock, David acknowledges God as his source of strength and stability. Just as the rock provides a firm foundation, God provides a secure place of refuge for David. By calling God his Redeemer, David recognizes that God is the one who delivers him from sin and restores him to the right relationship with himself. This closing prayer is a beautiful way to end this psalm because it brings everything back to God. David knows that to live a life that pleases God, he must rely on God's strength as his rock and his grace as the Redeemer. As we reflect on these final verses of Psalm 19, we see a progression that is both humbling and inspiring. David begins by acknowledging his need for God's cleansing from his sin faults, then prays for protection from deliberate sin, and finally he expresses his desire to live a life that is pleasing to God in both word and thought. This passage challenges us to examine our own hearts. Are we aware of our hidden sins in our lives? Are we relying on God's strength to keep us from deliberate sin? Are we committed to living in a way that pleases God, not just outwardly, but also in our speech and our thoughts? David's prayer is one that we can adopt for ourselves. Let's ask God to reveal the hidden faults in our hearts, to keep us from sins that we know we are prone to, and to help us to live lives that are pleasing to Him. And let us rest in the knowledge that God is our rock, our strength, and our Redeemer, the one who rescues us and restores us to Himself. Thank you for joining me on this leg of our wisdom trek. As always, I encourage you to continue study and meditating on God's Word, allowing it to transform your heart and to guide your life. Until the next time, keep moving forward in the pursuit of God's wisdom, and remember to keep trekking along the path of righteousness. May the Lord bless and keep you as you walk in His wisdom. And if you found this podcast insightful, please subscribe and leave us a review. Then encourage your friends and family to join us and come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek creating a legacy. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. As we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, then to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you next time for more Daily Wisdom.